turn back to our scripture lesson that we read earlier this morning, the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 15, the 7 and 8 verse. When you have it, say amen. amen. If you need me to wait on you, say wait on me. The Gospel according to St. John, chapter 15, beginning at the 7th verse and it reads if ye abide in me and this is Jesus talking and my words abide in you ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples. For Sunday this morning, I want to talk about the glory of God. The glory of God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. For the last two Sundays, we've been dealing with our theme for 2013. Our theme for the year is performing ministry, doing your part as assigned and required by God by being recyclable in the hands of God for the glory of God. Last Sunday and last year, when we got a head start on our theme, we dealt with performing ministry. Yes. Last Sunday, we dealt with being recyclable. This Sunday, I want to deal with the glory of God as we will conclude our explanation of the theme for this year. Amen? Amen. Now, in order to really get a clear understanding of what we're talking about this morning, we must get a working definition of what glory means. Many times in church settings, we heard the word glory and uh, the glory of God, but then we don't always know what it means. So for our working definition for this sermon, we want to define glory as bringing honor, recognition, great praise, prestige, and notoriety to God. We want to define it as bringing honor, recognition, great praise, notoriety, and prestige to God. That's our definition of glory. So when we look at our definition of glory and we look at our theme performing ministry, we see that it, the purpose of performing ministry is to bring honor, great praise, prestige, notoriety to God. Yes. That's the purpose for performing ministry. I want us to get this definition in our minds because people perform ministry, but they don't perform it for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. All right? They, they have their own ambitions of why they're doing ministry. Some are doing it out of obligation. Some are doing it because they want the prestige to come towards them. Some of them are trying to make a name for themselves. But everybody's not doing ministry because they want to bring glory to God. That's right. But the purpose of our theme this year is not so everybody in the church can be working. It is so that we can bring glory to God. Now, in bringing glory to Him and performing ministry, God does two things in the midst of that. He blesses other people and blesses us at the same time. Yes. Yes. This is the heartbeat of God. So as we are performing ministry for his glory, he is allowing us to bless others and allowing us to receive a blessing from him all at the same time. And this is his purpose for ministry. Yes. Our purpose is to bring glory to him. His purpose is to bless others and ourselves. Why in that order? Because that removes the schisms out of the church. Oh, got silent in here for a minute. 
See, when you're doing it for the glory of God and you're not doing it to make a name for yourself, you don't care if anybody calls out your name or not. You don't care if you get any recognition or not. You don't care if anybody calls your name or not. So you're not trying to get with somebody else so all both of y'all can get together or a whole group of y'all can get together and say, we're going to do this ministry so we can make a name for ourselves. It eliminates the schisms in the church because we ain't doing it for nobody else but for God. Yes. Let me break it down even more. You're not doing it for the pastor. You're not doing it for the first lady. You're not doing it for the officers. You're not even doing it for LLWC. You are doing it for the glory of God. Yes. And if LLWC doesn't give any glory for you doing ministry, so be it because that's not our purpose in the first place. Well, go ahead, sir. Our purpose for performing ministry, and remember we define performing ministry as doing your part as assigned and required by God. Amen. The purpose is to bring glory to Him. Because yes. in the midst of bringing glory to Him, He's going to cause us to bless somebody else. All right. And then He's going to pour His blessing upon us. And see, this is what God does. If we do it for His glory, then He'll give us a name. Wow. If we do it for ourselves, we get no name. Uh, oh, right. God. Right. Why? Why? Because he wants somebody to know you are doing it for me. So I'm going to send people your way so you can be a blessing to them. That's why he's going to give you a name. But if you're doing it for yourself and he's not getting any glory, there is no name. Well, preach. And he's not sending anybody your way just so you can have an ego and be set on a pedestal. So we're performing ministry for the glory of God so that he can help us be a blessing to others. And we and he calls us the blessing to fall upon us. Remember I told you that's his heartbeat? Yes. And as we perform more ministry by being recyclable in his hands, and remember what we said, recycle boy's head, however he molds me, however he shakes me, however he wants to move me, that's how I want to be. If we do ministry that way, then it causes us to get his heartbeat. Uh-huh. So the more ministry I do by being recyclable in his hands, the closer I get to God, and the closer I get to God, the more I get his heartbeat in my heart. Yes. So I'm not doing it for my own glory because I got his heartbeat in my heart. I'm doing it for his glory. Yes. Well, and if I follow the pattern, it will take me to the right destination. Yes. The glory of God. Mm. See, we gotta realize something here. We gotta realize something here. If you didn't know this. But bringing glory to God is not a condition of the mind or a physical activity of the body. Say it, say it, say it. I'll say it again. Bringing glory to God. There's some of y'all looking like I'm shooting over your head, and I'm not. Bringing glory to God is not a condition of the mind. In other words, it's not a mindset. It is not a physical activity. It is a desire of the heart. Hey. Wow, good. That's good. That's good, sir. It's a desire of the heart. And I can't teach you desire. Wow, that's true. I can't preach desire in you. Uh -huh. you got to want it for yourself. Yes. And the only way we get to want it, the desire to give God the glory is by getting closer to him and the way he has set up the, how to get closer to him, one of the ways rather, he set up how to get closer to him is by performing ministry and being recyclable in his hands. Yes. And that causes us to get closer to him and as we get closer to him, the giving him glory now becomes a desire of my heart, not just a mental condition or a mindset. Because if it's just a mindset, when I get tired, I'll change my mind. All right. Yes. If it's just a physical activity, when I get tired of doing the physical activity, I'll stop doing it. But when it is a desire of the heart, the heart makes me go on when my mind says, you need to stop. The heart makes me go on when my body says, oh, I'm tired, I can't do it no more. When you got the heart 
to give God the glory. You keep on working even when you don't feel like working. Even when your mind set down. When a runner got the hunger to win, he keeps on running. Even when his body says, I can't do it, I can't do it no more. But his heart makes him keep on running. When somebody wants a championship in a football or a basketball game, even when their body is tired and they're going through the second overtime, they say, we got to keep on going because we want this championship. Yes, because they're hungry for it. So in other words, it is a desire of the heart. It is a hunger to give God glory. Yes. And that's something church can't teach you. Well, I can't teach you how to make God's glory the desire of your heart. I can't teach you that. Yes, My God. The only way you going to get that? You got to get in touch with God. Yes. You got to spend time with Him. You got to begin to perform ministry. Yes. Because many of us who play ball didn't necessarily like ball when we first started. That's right. But the more we played, the more we liked it. Mm -hmm. And the more we got a heart for playing it. Yes. Yes. Many of us who play football. Street football, you know, and one of the grass get hit and all that. Didn't necessarily want to get out there and get hit the first time you got out there. Especially after the first time you got hit and you got up kind of slow and like, do I really want to play? <laughs> but the more you play, the more you got a hunger to play. The more it was in your heart. And that way you kept on playing because it was in your heart. The more you do ministry, the more you become recyclable in God's hand, the more he's going to put a hunger in you for the sea his glory be performed in your life. Yes. yes. Bringing glory to God is not just an objective that we decide mentally to achieve. It is a heart-driven motivation. Heart-driven motivation. Why do people give up and stop doing stuff in church? Because their heart ain't in it. Yes. yes. That's hard now. Then. Can, can I pull from a poet? I would have got me another poet. Uh -oh. Can I pull from another poet? I would have got the poet and let it start. Uh -oh. And it's like if your heart isn't in it, why can't you tell me? So, if my heart wasn't in it, I would have gone long ago. If your heart isn't in it, why do you keep me hanging on? Just tell me and I'll be gone from your life. And God is saying the same thing to you. If your heart ain't in it, why don't you just tell me so? If your heart ain't in it, I would have left long ago. If your heart ain't in it, don't keep me holding on. If your heart ain't in it, let me get out of your life. Go ahead, Go ahead sir. Can't get no help in here. What? If your heart ain't in it, God said, I don't need you. Because I need somebody whose heart is in it. But when your heart is in it, when it gets tough and it gets rough and you feel like giving up, you won't give up because your heart is in it. My God. I like that point. Your heart is in it. <laughs> God is sitting around saying, yes, all you had to do was tell me. Yes. If you told me, I lost, I left a long time ago. Yeah, if you told me, I would keep holding on. If you told me that your heart won't in it, I would just left you alone. My God, go ahead, sir. Because if it's not in your heart, My God. he don't want you doing it. Well, come on here. And we got too many people, too many churches. Performing ministry, mm -hmm. but the heart ain't in it. That's right. And it ain't for the glory of God. It's for the glory of man. And then when that man dies, or that man messes up, or that man sins, the church stopped doing the work because they weren't doing it for God. They were doing it for the man. I will never want LLW to see to do it for me. If you do it for me, stop doing it right now. I want you to sit down and do nothing, then do it for me. I want you to do it for God. But when I make you mad, that means you'll keep on doing it. When I get on your nerves, that means you'll keep on doing it. But if you're doing it for me, when I get on your nerves, I ain't doing nothing after that man. He can't appreciate nothing. Find it. What did he tell the pastor to go ahead and pat you on the back? Mm. Yeah, I ain't 
Well, what, what did it tell you to do? We do it because we want to keep you motivated. Amen. Yes. We play the minute manager. Yes. We give you a minute of praise, a minute of criticism, and a minute of how to get it better. Yes. Yes, sir. But it's God's job to reward you for what you're doing for him, not ours. Yeah. And when you're looking for God for the reward, you don't care if you got a title. You're not looking for a title. You're not looking to do it for God. You're not looking for a position. You're not looking to do it for God. We got a church made up of looking for positions and looking for titles. And ain't nobody doing it but the glory of God. I'm preaching like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And God is saying, I need your heart. Is it? Yes, God. Because you really came last in church if your heart ain't in it. That's right. And some of you know that for a fact because some of you have ran from church to church. Yes. Ouch. Come on here. Let me wipe your face. Ouch. Some of you ran from church to church because your heart won't in it and because your heart won't in it as soon as somebody got on your nerve, it's time for me to go. I feel the anointing of God telling me now it's time for me to leave. I got a witness. I got a witness. She got on my nerves. That's my witness. It's time me to get out of here now. If your heart was there, you've been in my word. I was waiting on you. I 
had a good breakfast for you. I had the candlelight laid out there. Wow. I, I had a good dinner, your favorite dinner in the world. And I was waiting for you to come, but you stood me up. I thought your heart was in it, because if your heart was in it, you would have met me. No matter if it's 3 in the morning, or if it's 2 in the morning, or if it's 6 in the morning, or if it's at midnight. Or it means I got to fast for a little while. It means I got to give up something. You would have did it, because your heart was in it. Because when your heart is in it, it don't matter. But when God look for you, your actions don't dictate what your mouth is saying. Well, and you have to, yeah, I ain't gonna go there. Oh, they used to say something different in the world, but I ain't gonna go there. Your, your, your actions don't dictate what your mouth is saying. And God said, you tell me you love me. You tell me you love me. But I don't see no fruits of your love. <laughs> you tell me you love me, but you can't spend no time with me. Right. You, you tell me you love me, but you want to just kiss me as, you, as you're running out the door? What do you mean? How do you kiss God as you're running out the door? Lord, I thank you for this day. Bye, Lord. I hate the word. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you got all the women to say, man, you know you want your husband to kiss you like that. I hate that.
my glory. Because if they see my glory, they'll realize it's better than it really is. If they see my glory, they'll realize there is a God who can deliver us out of this trouble that we're in. If they see my glory, they'll realize there's not a situation he can't work out. And the thing he's trying to tell us this morning, how do they see his glory? They see it through us. And if we're not showing forth his glory, how can they see it? If we're not allowing him to shine, many of us don't want to be transparent about what God is doing in our lives. But that's God's glory that somebody needs to see so they'll realize that the thing they're going through, there is a solution to what they're going through. People don't realize there is a bomb in Gideon. There is a physician that can heal devil hands. They don't know that because you won't let God's glory shine forth in your life. And the world is like Moses. Lord, can I see your glory? I just need to see your move. I need to see that there's some goodness still in this world. I need to see that miracles still happen. I need to see that deliverance can still be brought past. I need to see that even though I don't have all the education that I need to have, and this job is at a dead end, you can survive all of my needs according to your wishes and glory by Christ Jesus. The world needs to see God's glory, and the only way they're going to see it, they got to see it in you. Yes. Go, can, I, can I ask y'all something? I know I'm getting nosy now, but can I ask you something? Can you stop complaining on Facebook? Well, so God can, so people can see your glory. So people can see God's glory. Oh, the whole house got quiet. I know, I know, I know, I know. I, know. I, know. I just stuck on your toes. I know, I know. I said, don't you get it? No, I got a Facebook page. Thank you. Hallelujah. Ah, glory. <laughs> can, can, can you stop acting like the God ain't good? Can, can you stop acting like that he ain't wonderful, that he ain't kind? Can you stop putting a bad credit report on my God? Well, all right. I'm here to clean up his credit today because you got something up there that don't belong up there. I'm about to clean up his credit report. I'm about to take that off his credit report because he didn't do that to you. You didn't obey him. That's why you in trouble. You didn't do what you were supposed to do. That's why you in trouble. They ain't God's fault. God's always been there. He's always been good. He's always been awesome. He's always been comfortable. He's always been Sometimes we don't realize that in our complaint, we put a bad report on God. Because what I've learned, and I've been in this life for a while now. Well, I've been here 45 years, so I've been here a while now. I've been in this life a while now. And what I've learned in this life, that although sometimes it looks bad, it could be a whole lot worse. And sometimes I may be crying over my situation, but then somebody tell me about their story, and I cry worse. Over their story, and I lift my hands and say, Lord, I thank you. And that's not me. I'm praying for them, but I thank you. That's not my marriage. I'm praying for them, but I thank you. That's not my job. I'm praying for oh God. Hallelujah. I've learned that no matter what I'm going through, it always could be worse. And what if I'm going through now with God on my side? What if I was going through by myself? Some of you crying that God is on your side. Some of you crying that God is bringing you out. But just imagine if God walked on your side, what would you be doing? I'd be visiting you in the lonely tomb. I'd be having to come to the 13th floor and say, are you all right? And you'd be saying, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and they'd be feeding you spaghetti and applesauce. Come on, eat this, eat this. You need to eat something. You need to eat something. If God walked on your side. <laughs> if God walked on your And we're giving God a bad credit report. We are reporting to creditors something that he didn't do. 
And God is saying, why are you blaming me? I didn't do it. And don't you know, if I didn't come to your rescue, you wouldn't even be here today. Don't you know that when the enemy had a right to cut you off because you did it wrong, my son Jesus who sits on my right hand said, Daddy, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. And because he said the blood, I wouldn't let the enemy execute judgment. Because right. the Bible said the devil is an accuser of the brethren. Every day he is accusing us of things that we really did do. Yes, he don't got to make up some stuff on us. Some of us really did it. Yes. <laughs> and although the devil is the father of lies, for some of us, he's just telling the truth. Yes. He's like, I can't even make up a lie. This is good. My goodness, let me use this. <laughs>
Yes. That's why we don't teach church. We don't teach doctrine. Mm -hmm. I want to teach you how to have a relationship. Yes. yes. Because I know if you ever get in a relationship and you really get into it, you ain't gonna wanna get out. That's right, that's right, that's right. You ain't gonna wanna get out. Come as y'all. Come jacked up. Come still smelling what you drunk last night. Come dressed like you was at the club. Can't get no amens in here. Can't get no amens in Somebody feel guilty, huh? Just, just come as y'all. Because all I want to do is introduce you to Jesus and get him to get you into the relationship and, and all that other stuff that church has a problem with, I got a problem because they're not wearing the right thing. I got a problem because they're drinking the wrong thing. And I got a problem because they don't know how to do it the way we do it. So what? Mm. Mm. Jesus. Let me get you saved. Let God fill you with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will teach you all things. And then when I say it, you'll listen to me. You ain't gonna listen to me when you got your own agenda and you got your own mind. But when God breaks you up and then God sends a word to me, you'll hear it and change. I need you to get a relationship with God. And with a relationship and a heart we can do some things. Yes. With a relationship and a heart, we can go reach that one who's just like us. Yes. Cause that's what I really want us to do this year. I'm closing. But you know what I really want us to do this year? I want you to go to find one that's just like you. Well. Yeah, you know who they are. They just God. like you. And the reason they're not in church is because they're where you used to be. Uh -huh. And I'm here to give you an assignment this morning. Right. That you need to work on all year long right. until the new year service. You need to get the one that's just like you in God's house. Well, because the only one who can witness to them is you, because you the only one know what they're going through, what they're feeling, how they feel about it, because you were in the same boat until God changed your heart. Well, my God. And this second Sunday of the new year, God's giving you an assignment. I need you to go get the one that's just like you. I don't know who that is. Don't worry. Lord, give it to him before the week's out. Well. And he will show you before the week's out who it is you need to reach that's just like him. Yes, sir. Because just like he changed your life, he wants to change that person's life. Yes. And you are the one he wants to show forth his glory through. Yes, sir. That means that every partner of the LLWC has an assignment this year. Yes. And the first time I heard you say, well, Pastor, we got nothing to do. I'm going to say, yes, you do. <laughs> I'm going to quote from Pastor Book 1, Chapter 1, Verse 1. Go get the one just like you. <laughs> and then bring them to church. So that God may heal their bodies and deliver their soul. Can the church say, Amen? Amen. Stand to your feet all over the building. <laughs>